Morning guys. Now I think the correct YouTube cliche to use at this point is to say that this video is going to be a little bit different. This channel, Mark G, the test run, started with my first running video upload on the 2nd of January 2021. That first video, entitled Checking My Beginner Running Form, currently has less than 100 views, and I can see why. It's terrible. What that video did though, is set the tone for what this channel would become. And I don't mean it's full of terrible videos. It fully embodied the title of the channel, The Test Run. Although there is some blurb about the channel in the description, um, not many people kind of dig into channel home pages. And I've never really taken the time to describe and explain what the channel is all about. So what I'm going to do as we watch my run from earlier today where I went out exploring some tricky trails in my local area, exploring some places I've never been before, knowing full well that some of them were going to be horrendous nightmares. I'm going to explain more about what the test run is all about. So at the point when I started the channel I'd only been running for a few months. April the 13th, 2020 was when I first started running. I began my Couch to 5K program and that was what got me started. That was the first aspect of running that got me interested. Um, I was going to be learning how to run from the ground up uh, by following that basic run-walk program that turns into a gradually running longer and longer program until eventually after about nine weeks you should be able to run 5k or at least run continuously for 30 minutes and that was the goal from the outset. Running itself seems like such a simple thing, such a single one-dimensional thing that from looking in from the outside you can't imagine that there's too much to it. You just run. To use another YouTube cliche, you just put one foot in front of the other. But like many interests, um, running's not unique in this. You'll find that once you start digging into it, once you start living in that world, uh, interacting with people and looking up information on the topic, you'll find there are so many different things that you can get involved in and be interested in and so many different things that you can do within running and that yeah just gradually make themselves known and you discover more and more that you can actually look into get involved in try out for yourself and that's where the test run comes into it what I was finding as I got more and more into running is that all these different aspects of running things that you can try out started um, catching my interest and I wanted to just take maybe one at a time <laughs> try it out for myself see if it's something I like show it on my channel let people know what I found out about it and then yeah see what sticks and gradually build up my running knowledge and at this point I've been running for over four years so uh, I know a lot more now than I did when I started and I know for a fact that there's a lot more that I've still got to learn and experience. Looking back at the things I've done so far on this YouTube and running journey, it's actually quite a big list. After Couch to 5k, I started running further and further, gradually increasing the long runs at the weekend. Uh, it reached the point where I did my 26.2 subscriber special and ran a metric marathon, which is the 26.2 kilometers. That absolutely wiped me out. It was by far the longest run I'd done. And uh, yeah, that was a serious challenge. Not surprisingly, in the next video I was complaining of shin pain. The video after, I was complaining of knee trouble. 
So you can see as your running journey progresses, you start to learn just how far to push yourself and how quickly to progress up the distances. The next thing I started to look into was the Garmin coach programs, the 5k one in particular. I decided to try and get my 5k time down to below 28 minutes, which would have been the personal best for me at that point. And that first Garmin coach video I did uh, was my first one that actually gained some popularity and people still watch it to this day. Mainly due to the title, not the content. <laughs> I was still pretty amateur with the YouTube videos at this point, but it's given me a uh, pause for thought quite often. I, might, I think about doing the Garmin coach programs again to try and get my 5k even faster. And uh, yeah, I know it would make an interesting topic for videos that quite a few people would be interested in, so that's crossed my mind a few times. One of the next aspects of running that cropped up during this process. I managed to sprain my ankle while I was out running on the trails and making a video. So the next few videos after that were on the topic of recovering from injury. I was treating myself for this ankle sprain. Um, yeah, just following some YouTube videos to speed up the recovery, uh, doing exercises and so on. And that was a, a big topic for me at the time. Uh, not the first or last time that injuries uh, come into things, but uh, yeah, that's just one of the things that oh. running has to offer. Actually, probably felt bad here. Having recovered from injury, the next thing I did was sign up for my first race, the Chatsworth 10K. So I uh, made a short series of videos where I was uh, training in the lead up to that and did a little bit of filming on race day. I uh, didn't carry the camera around with me, but my wife managed to get the start and end of the race and uh, I did some chatting about it before and after, so that was my first attempt at uh, videoing a race day. Uh, obviously left some room for improvement, but yeah, it was quite a good watch nevertheless. Having enjoyed my first experience of a running race, and uh, the next thing I decided to look into was math training. Um, so I was doing the low heart rate training, I think 134 was my maximum target heart rate at the time and uh, yeah I tried that out for a few weeks. Sadly um, my knee must have had a, an injury brewing as I got into that and that flared up to the point where the next thing I looked into was my first physio visit. <laughs> Another joy of the running world. But uh, yeah, that turned out to be quite helpful actually. I went and saw a, a physio and um, he made a video recording of me running on his treadmill and uh, showed me back my running form, commented on it and uh, allowed me to see how I was overstriding a little bit, particularly with my left foot. Uh, and that got me going down the rabbit hole of looking into improving my running form. So my delvings into the world of running form got me interested in the pose method, uh, which was supposed to uh, help you run faster, further and injury free for life, according to the blurb on the book I bought. So I followed that um, all the way through the program, and recorded all the learnings, all the lessons that I went through as another series on the channel. And uh, that massively helped me with my running form. I totally changed from kind of striding out and heel striking and basically jumping from foot to foot <laughs> to more of a heel towards your bum and fall forwards, which was the gist of the method I was using. And that got me to do more of a kind of mid foot, four foot strike, um, particularly when I was using the lower drop shoes or running faster. So that really felt better and uh, managed to stave off the knee issues that I'd had in the past. Slightly trodden path there and I almost missed the exit. I think this is it. I was always drawn to trail running more than roads, uh, though I did enjoy both. Uh, but my local trails I like to explore, find out where paths went that I'd not been on before. Uh, and after a while I came across this kind of signboard in the middle of a field 
talking about the Chesterfield round walk route, which was a 50k walking route all around the outskirts of the town through the villages and hamlets uh, surrounding Chesterfield. So I really like the idea of exploring that entire route and um, started recording a series of me kind of filming sections of it and finding my way around and uh, soon discovered that there was an ultra marathon race uh, which was basically using the same route as the Chesterfield round walk. This was the Spire Ultra and before I knew it I'd signed up for my first 50k ultra marathon having done two 10ks at this point. Uh, I had a year to prepare for the next Spire Ultra race, uh, so that was going to be my first 50k. Another topic of interest to most runners is shoes, of course, and uh, the pose method recommended using kind of low drop shoes, zero drop basically, uh, and I'd been on a, a journey of going from high drop 10 mil drop Nikes I think I started with down through some 8 mil Merrells and then some 5 mil Hokers and then I got some Altras uh, which are the zero drop shoes and then finally got some Barefoot, Vivo Barefoot so uh, I was exploring that, that world of lower drop shoes um, having read about them of course in uh, Born to Run Christopher McDougall's book okay. and of course they were recommended in the Pose Method book as well so and I thought I'd try those out and see how I got on with those and uh, made sure I gradually introduced lower and lower drop shoes instead of just uh, diving from 10 mil to zero and uh, yeah got on with those quite well. Is that an exit? Must have done about an extra two kilometres in that field and the one next to it. One of the next things I did was sign up to another 10k race, this time at Carsington Reservoir. Um, did a better job of filming the race this time, ran around with my GoPro. Some of my earlier videos were filmed on my phone of course, so uh, thankfully the GoPro improved the quality somewhat. And uh, yeah as each race comes along I find that I'm getting better and better at filming them and making a decent video out of them so hopefully that uh, progress continues and uh, future race videos will be hopefully even better than the ones I've made up to now. So next I got stuck into my 50k training plan. I did week one and half of week two before I got injured. Now Undoubtedly the cause of this injury was the fact that about a week or two before I was due to start on the 50k training plan, my brother and I set out to walk the entire 50k route, uh, having never walked anything near that distance before. It took me just under 12 hours to get around the entire route and obviously I was shattered after that and all the fatigue that I'd built up uh, obviously did not help <laughs> and uh, as soon as I got stuck into my running plan to train for the 50k injury, stuck, uh, injury struck and uh, I had a bout of runner's knee which was another new running related experience for me that I had to work through. Another aspect of running and training that I've explored uh, was strength training. Uh, previously been into barbell strength training in the past. That was a big interest of mine Made historically. Um, so brought that back uh, to a degree as part of my training for the 50k as well as some more what you might call running specific exercises um, as recommended in the book. Then I was wondering which shoes to wear for the race, so uh, I was umming and ahhing about what to go for and ended up with the uh, Hoka Speed Goat 5s, which were a perfect shoe for the race and ones that I still wear to this day. As race, uh, as race day approached, uh, unfortunately, I started with some calf trouble. So my last few weeks of 
supposed training <laughs> before my first ultra were a bit of a disaster zone really I was having to try and rest and uh, get the cough to uh, to feel better injury to my calf led me to going for my first sports massage which is something else that uh, runners get to uh, look into uh, as part of their journey so I've been to three different places for massages since I started running having never had any kind of massage before that and uh, found the benefits of getting treatments from a good practitioner and that's something that I'll uh, fall back on as needed so then I ran my first ultra that was a fantastic experience um, running for eight hours and seven minutes I think it was in the end until you've done that you, you don't really know what to expect crossing a path I used earlier came from that way and went down there I'm going straight over this time um, but yeah by the time I was kind of two-thirds of the way through the race I was uh, feeling pretty broken I uh, managed to uh, uh, you know trudge my way to the end and I was so pleased to get in under the nine hour cutoff and get my first ultra medal and uh, yeah I can safely say that that was going to be the first of uh, a number of ultras that I uh, have and will end up doing one thing I've found as I'm doing uh, some intense training as it gets towards a race is I tend to eat more to make sure I'm fueled and recovering properly and generally put on a bit of weight as it gets closer to the race um, so I'm kind of doing the opposite to cutting weight ready for the race uh, I tend to be uh, bulking up not necessarily in a good way uh, which which helps with recovery um, but yeah something needs to be done about it uh, after race day is over so that's when I did my one perfect month challenge uh, where I challenged myself to basically stick with a program of regular running and eating well for an entire month and tracking my weight and managed to lose quite a bit of weight and get in good shape as a result of that so that was another fun thing to explore along the way and I made a video of that of course so sometime later um, I did my first half marathon race went to Macclesfield that's a pretty hilly route as I found out on the day really enjoyed that uh, road half marathon um, so yeah still enjoying a bit of road running um, I was using a feature on my Garmin watch where it would suggest daily runs for me and I was uh, just doing everything it told me um, feeling great <laughs> for a while always look forward to that bit <laughs> until the wheels fell off because it had been pushing me too hard and not giving me chance to uh, recover or take rest days so uh, yeah that did get me really fit but also my calves flared up again and I had to get those sorted out with more massage before the half marathon when it came to training for my second ultra marathon the Shires and Spires 56k race I'd learned so much along the way in training for my first ultra and other stuff that I'd learned since that that whole process of the 24 week training plan just went as well as I could possibly have hoped for I've learned so much uh, in terms of looking after myself uh, fueling recovery um, looking at rested uh, resting heart rate um, talking about faster running uh, when to skip a run um, all these things that just came with the experience that I gained and really helped me to just follow that training plan as closely as I could without pushing things too far and breaking myself and uh, yeah that was invaluable in training for my second ultra so of course um, running comes with its own shopping list if you like all the different gear that you can get. I made a video about all the running gear I got for Christmas. Um, there's all the mandatory kit that you need for ultra marathons as well, which you have to pick up along the way. 
training has different aspects to it as well. There were different phases in the plan I followed. It was the base training, the hills, the speed, Breathing endurance, jets. and then the fine tuning with the taper at the end. All things that you need to learn about as you get uh, more involved in the world of running and racing. Um, during my training for the second ultra, uh, I did my first couple of runs over in the Peak District. So finding out what real hills are all about. <laughs> The ones I've been used to around here, you know, I thought they were pretty tough. Um, it's a very hilly area where I live. Um, but heading over to the Peak District <laughs> and, uh, you know, running around the Edel skyline. Um, yeah, that showed me what it's all about. Um, and, yeah, that was a whole different aspect of running and a new experience. Which, uh, yeah, it was fun to learn about. Also did my first couple of runs, training runs, with other people. Um, so I did a couple of runs in the Peak District with a friend and um, went out on a, a local route with a, a friend who's a Isn't member it? of a local running club as well. Um, so running clubs is something that I've learnt about or not yet experienced for myself that I may do in the future. I imagine most people pop through the gap in the hedge <laughs> and then just come down this bit even though the footpath is evidently where it's signposted and where the styles are. I did a video are. about running when you're tired and you don't want to, particularly in the depths of a, a long ultra marathon race, how to kind of get yourself going when you're actually feeling like the last thing you want to do is run. And uh, just the mindset involved in that is something that's really important if you want to you know, get a, a good result in a race. Um, yeah, you can't give in to your, your body being tired. You need to deal with situations, um, fuel yourself properly, have the mindset to keep going and do as much as you can even when you don't feel like it. These are all, uh, again, things that I've learned along the way. So what's next uh, on this test run journey of mine? Um, I've signed up to park run, but I'm yet to do a park run, so that's something I want to explore soon. Um, there's a local 5k race called the No Walk in the Park. Uh, that takes place every month, so I'm going to sign up and do one of those in the near future. And after that, who knows? I haven't yet committed to do another ultra marathon. That first couple of six month blocks of training uh, has made me just wary of the fact that I need to be really committed and keen uh, in order to uh, get ready for another one. So but what I'm doing in the meantime is making sure that I do a lot more strength training than I have been trying to get myself more bulletproof, stronger, so that I can run more efficiently and for longer. Um, as fitness has never been a problem on the longer races, it's always that physical endurance um, where you, you just yeah, you just start to break down and uh, no amount of fitness in the world is going to help you to uh, run quickly in those final stages of the race. So yeah, just making sure I keep myself in good condition keep myself fit and that allows me to then explore whatever aspect of running I decide to tackle. Right, job done. Ended up running a bit further than the 10k I had planned. <laughs> and I'm in a bit of a state. <laughs> Some wet fields out there. Wet and muddy. Always good fun. So I guess that's the main thing. So <laughs> thanks for watching guys. If you do want to subscribe to my channel it is free. Just press the button and watch the subscribe account go up by one. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.